You know why? Because we're bigger than Mexico. <laughs> we're bigger than Mexico. Kids keep, you know, being born in our country that are from Mexican, Salvadorian descendants, uh, Argentinian descendants, Brazilian descendants with dual citizenship. Mm -hmm. So they're in our territory right now. The future is on the territory. The thing is, what are we going to do with it? And mm -hmm. who we're going to make sure takes care of them? Who are we going to make sure that treats those people as human beings in the, in the right way? Okay. Without discriminating or putting them down or anything like that, or thinking that the U S is bigger than anybody else. And I said this before, the U S belongs to the people. The U S soccer federation belongs to the people. It doesn't belong to the people who are running it. It belongs to a nation, right? And that nation, which is the future, the kids, okay. We need to take care of it, but we need the right people that are people who are humble. That are people that are willing to really, uh, lower their status and, and go and find, uh, you know, what the needs are. I mean, I always fought the years that I was youth soccer, I always fought for making sure that we get, we gave opportunities to, to our, uh, to our Hispanic kids and doing, you know, training centers all over. I used to do that in LA. I did it here in Northern California because it, it, it didn't come from the Federation. It wasn't in their plans. See what I'm saying? And every time I did one, mm -hmm. we, I always had a lot of kids that came in from clubs outside the academy because I made, I made them feel that they were part of our federation. I made the families feel that their kids w were wanted by us. Um, and, 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 you know, one of the things, and I'm not doing propaganda for anybody, but one of, one of the things that we have here in America is, is the Alliance organization, which is, you know, it's an organization that basically is giving a lot of chances to the kids in the Hispanic communities right. more than what the Federation has done in years. And I applaud that because, uh, you know, a lot of those kids are going to Mexico, not because they only want to go to Mexico, it's because they only, you know, they've been given that opportunity that we haven't given them here. Um, and I don't know why, you know, it was always a battle between, uh, you know, working with Alianza or going to events of them. I went to a couple of them and some, sometimes obviously uh, the Federation they, they didn't want to work with them. Uh, but that's what we need to do going forward. That, that is very interesting, Hugo. Hugo, I want to thank you so much for joining us on the, on the show today. And uh, on the show, we actually do a little something called a shameless plug uh, where you can plug us, where you can find you on Twitter, uh, social media, all that good stuff. So if you want to, just go ahead and plug yourself away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. Look, I, I want to, obviously, uh, this is one thing that I, I want to, you know, I, I want to, before we close here, um, absolutely. I can tell you one thing. Uh, I believe honestly with all my heart in our American players. Mm -hmm. Okay. Whether they're Hispanic, African American, Asian, I, I don't care. I believe them because I've seen them. I know, uh, the talent we have in this country, but um, but also, uh, I will say with all respect, okay, I think uh, whoever comes in and wins this presidency needs to really make a big change. Um, we need a new leadership in the federation. We need people with a different vision and people who are willing to work hard all right, for the sake of our programs, not for them. Not to be on TV, on the radio, or on shows. Mm -hmm. No, people who are willing to say, "Look, you know what? Let's do this because it's the best for our kids, not for me or somebody else." If we do that, you're gonna see a big change, okay? Because everybody in the world talks about how much America has right now, uh, and how close we are of really breaking through to be a power in this country. But until we change that mentality that we've had for the last 15, 20 years is not going to happen. We only going to have flashes of what, how good our players could be in our mm -hmm. system. You know, so hopefully, again, uh, I'm praying that we get somebody there with, <laughs> how can I say it, with the guts to make a change yeah. where it really matters, right? Mm. 
not to do favors because they're they're gonna get their votes. Uh, you can favor, you know, they, all those candidates can favor their, you know, their associations or, or leagues. That's not gonna change anything. You, you need to come up and clean house and, and, and put people in charge that are really, really looking to change. And and I know they bring, you know, they every time they, they, they think about bringing new people from overseas and that. You have people in this country that are capable of doing that. They just need to find them, right? And uh, hopefully they'll do it. Well, Hugo, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. It's very insightful. Thank you, Hugo. And I uh, hope we. No, can... I appreciate you guys taking the time to do this because without you guys, honestly, it's it's hard, mm-hmm. you know, to to for people to know, mm-hmm. for people to know the truth. Um, sure, sure. And you guys are part of this, and hopefully. Going forward, you'll continue to support all this. Absolutely. Well, thanks again, Hugo. Thank you, Hugo. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Take care. With the recent news of Jonathan Gonzalez and Hercules Gomez mentioning those things I did mention within the podcast, it was really enlightening to hear Hugo Perez talk about the issues that went on with the whole saga. Hugo knows Jonathan very well, and I think we learned a lot, Stephen. I don't know about you, but I think I learned a lot about the situation. I hope our listeners did as well. I'm definitely going to have to listen again to the interview multiple times to really dissect everything because Hugo spoke a lot and he gave us a lot and he did and he did and i really like his belief in the american player he he believes that they don't have to play a certain way if if that makes any sense he he believes that they can play creative offensive that's why he mentioned the name of bielsa who has been lauded by pep guardiola as one of the best managers in the world that's yeah. high praise from Pep, Pep Guardiola. And Johan Cruyff, he, uh, Hugo compared Johan Cruyff, Pep Guardiola, and this manager he wants as as the future of the national team. Yeah, and I I find it really interesting. I find I also find it I found it really enlightening when he talked about just how he's seen potential players in the U.S. system play, and how they can play up to this high standard, but we're kind of limiting them if that makes I feel like that's what that's along the lines of what he was saying yeah and the Jesse Gonzalez thing I think people don't realize how significant that is how you that was that 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 was all your research Stevie enlighten us yeah Armand I was listening to the Mac and Herc podcast on uh, ESPN and they were talking about the situation and I thought it was very interesting that they never really talked about the Jesse Gonzalez situation where he flip-flopped. We're having two players in the span of six months do pretty much the same thing, just in different directions. I, I think it's worth noting that because it tells you that this battle between just, I guess, the Hispanic or Mexican players in the U.S., the federations... This is going to become, I, I don't know how to describe it, but it's going to be a, a back and forth that you wouldn't believe to to get claim the rights of, of these young young players. I mean, you're going to see them become very young. You're going to start seeing 18-year-olds. And I think this could be a good thing for the U.S. because you might be able to start, you might be able to see youngsters come up through the system a lot quicker than we're used to. I mean, it could be a good thing, but I think it's a bad thing. I think it's a horrible precedent set by USSF by letting someone well, okay. who has been a part me, of their system. Let me – sorry to interrupt, but let me rephrase that. Yes, I think – but what I say, the outcome could push them to realize, oh, the situation has been bad. You know what I'm saying? That's that's only if there's a clean sweep change. I don't think – I think the status quo will change. We've seen the leadership deflect blame left and right. Oh, what, what did Tal Ramos say? And, Tom Ramos, one of the better coaches within the system, if not one of the best coaches within the system, saying that if we have the players in this country who feel Mexican and want to play for Mexico, I think you should play for Mexico. If we have players who feel American and want to fight for U.S. to represent America, you should play for the U.S. It's as simple as that. Mm. Yeah, 
Like, I mean, what? I, I don't... It's it's very complicated because you and I have gone back and forth in are we going to see any change at the top? And then Hugo, and I completely agree with him, just like anything in politics, it's not working from the top down, it's working from the bottom up. And it's any change from the top, they need to change the bottom. They need to go in as U.S. soccer president say, we're starting from the bottom up because any change at the top will not trickle down like you would think. Trickle in, down economics is a myth. Into what you, into the problems that U.S. soccer really has. No, I, I, I agree. I agree. And this huge thing with Jonathan, I think also something that's a little understated is that Thomas Rongen blatantly lied to the people. Yep. That he visited Jonathan Gonzalez three times. I don't understand how that's not a huge story because that is horrible. You cannot – if I – if I, if someone else had lied about something, you're gone. You're. I cannot believe that this isn't a bigger story, that he lied. And it's just a blame game going on. Oh, you know, Jonathan wasn't – we've been hearing through the media. This isn't from the U.S., but we've been hearing it. I've been seeing it on Twitter. I've been seeing it through, Oh, Jonathan wasn't feeling American. As a dual national, that's a load of crap. You know, you know what's interesting, Armand? It just, just came to me. You know how Hugo talked about why the Federation didn't want Jonathan and how he probably wasn't in their planes or whatever it may be? I think the Federation has no idea what's going on in Mexico. They might have a little bit. They're looking at all the dual French nationals, the Germans, all the military uh, sons and daughters. That's what they're going yeah. after. If you're asking that's me, a, that's it a makes, very interesting point. It makes mm-hmm. me, it makes more sense. Think about it. Julian Green, Bobby Wood, like you can name player after player. Like Fabian Johnson, Tim Lee Chandler. I mean, but the I list think goes that was on more because of the it was because of Jurgen's German influence. I think he was okay. He's he's German, and a lot of, a lot of those German Americans would love to play for a German legend such as Jurgen Klinsmann. But I do agree with your point that I'm not sure if USA does knows what's going on within Mexico. And Which Mexico's, is a real shame because it's Mexico a very talented league. Mexico is a league. very talented league. Yep. It, the league at Mexico is a very talented league. I've been watching it for about, I'd say, three, four years now. I mean, it's always on. It's always entertaining. And let me just tell you this. There's a, a, there's a lot of talent in there. I think it's an, a severely underrated league in terms of worldwide soccer today. No, it I is. It I really think, is. I think, I, think it abso- I think it absolutely is. But I just want to. I just want to end on this note. I think this whole thing, ranging from the lies, ranging from the blame game, ranging from losing this talented player, it's going to cast a dark cloud over U.S. soccer for a little bit, and it should. It should. Until the USSF president comes up and says, "All right," until the new until new leadership comes through, you should continue to put dark cloud. It's kind of calmed down. We don't talk about it anymore, but it should be talked about. It needs to be talked about because this is this isn't right. Yeah, no, one hundred percent. This is this is this is what these are players that are probably going to play more and more for our future, and we're doing this. We're not we're not treating them the same. I I didn't go into detail. But Jonathan Gonzalez had a sit down with a director of Mexican soccer at their house, had dinner, had a, had a little FaceTime with Juan Carlos Osorio. What did we do? Nothing. What did we do? Nothing. I mean, and, I ahead, hope I hope that we learn, and that's why I said earlier, I hope we can get good out of the situation. We learn from our mistakes. If we don't learn from any of our mistakes in any aspect of life, we're just going to repeat it. History tends to repeat itself, does it not? No, so, it, it does. It does. And so it's it, it's a shame it, it's a shame it had to happen. Yes. Especially in the weakest time in probably US soccer history. It would be great. Oh, I can't believe they didn't call him up for the Portugal national team and just and that's, burn the and bridge with the, Monterey. And that's the everybody has been talking about why didn't they why didn't they call him up because Monterey had to oblige and I've heard I've texted multiple people and They've been telling me the same thing. Why didn't USA come? I think that's where USA screwed up. Why didn't they communicate to him? There's so many issues that went wrong. So many. So hopefully, many. hopefully we can learn. We learned a lot from Hugo. Hopefully Thank you. you guys did. Thank you, Hugo. Follow us on Twitter at Unc Sam Soccer Pod. 
Armand Kafai, Stephen Jodderin, and our assistant producer, Jake Witt.